Hello, Exim Bibers. Today is April 5, 2024, or any other day. And just for today, motto is don't be a mental loafer. Yeah, that's what line is taken from the just for today card. Keep your brain busy with good things. That's very important for me to remember because I can easily gaze into space. Meditating when I should be concentrating. On the other hand, if I'm supposed to med be meditating, then I can't do it. Contradictory. Anyway, <clears throat> the next one is, do you often feel too lazy to engage in brainy stuff? Yes, that's me. I just don't want to do it when I'm supposed to be doing it. So I have to do something by force. And this is, just for today, read a paragraph of a book and see what happens. It can be any book. Just a book within reach, which is in this case, The French Lieutenant's Woman. Vanity binding. And... Uh, this means that in 1969, this is the first edition, somebody just um, paid a lot of money to have this um, special leather-bound book cover with nice end papers. See, it's very, very expensive, I suppose. So that must have been at least uh, $50 or, yeah, it's an American edition, $50 the equivalent of a hundred pounds nowadays. So it's very expensive to have things done like this. And this is obviously from a private library. So let's just check it. What do we have? Let's go to any given page <clears throat> and see what we have here. We have here an epigraph, you know, the beginning of a chapter, they have a little bit of a quote or whatever. And that's quite interesting. And here the first few lines read, in you resides my single power of sweet continuance here, Hardy, her immortality. So what I do next, not here, not now, but what I usually do next is just I have read this little epigraph thing, the first part of the epigraph, and I wonder who was Hardy and what is her immortality. Check <clears throat> this Hardy guy on Wikipedia and uh, have a look at the title, Her Immortality, and then do something about it. I often um, buy books just haphazardly because I just feel, let's say, motivated to buy a book after reading one paragraph from any other book that it was within reach. So that's one way of doing it. Helps me. So that's my 20 minutes thought and concentration every day. So let's go to the next batch. So here we are, herded through the grapevine. Today, I was so busy juggling the regrets of the past with the expectations of tomorrow I had no time for living in the present. Yeah. Taken from the grapevine and was written in Atlanta, Georgia. That's the US, by the way. August 2001 from How Is My Now? From the beginner's book. I didn't actually know that. Um, such a thing as a beginner's book exists, but it does. I just checked it out on Amazon. Wait a minute, maybe we can just show it. Insert a slide. Here we go. Slide inserted. And there is a beginner's book. It's $7.43. So I don't know what funny price, but you can buy it. It's the last one, 15 sold. So it is, there is such a thing and you can buy it over Amazon. That's nice. So we know that now. Just switch it off. Here we go. And just read it again. I was so busy juggling the regrets of the past with the expectations of tomorrow. I had no time for living in the present. Yeah. Atlanta, Georgia, August 2001.
wisdom. And who's going to be today's quote? We have on offer, let's go here, Georges Danton, who died on this day, or was executed on this day, April 5, in 1794. Or Algernon Charles Swinburne, an English poet, playwright, novelist, and critic. Uh, he was born in 1909. No, he was born in 1837 on the 5th of April, and he died in um, 1909. Charles Swinburne, yeah, he was with um, the Rossettis. And there's, I think there's the Rossetti house in Cheney Walk. That's where he also lived. He lived in, Swinburne lived in uh, Chelsea and in, I think, in Fulham. But I'm not too sure about it. Al Algernon, Algernon, Swimburn. So, or is it Spencer Tracy, who um, was born in 1900 on the 5th of uh, April? Or Kurt Cobain, American singer, songwriter, and guitarist, Club, uh, Club 27, uh, was born in 1967 and he died by self inflicted gunshot 1994. Or is it Allen Ginsberg? Who was who died on this day in 1997? Let's see, but I can tell you one thing: it's neither. We now go to France. Yeah, that was Misty Nguet from France. She was born on the 5th of April, 1873, and she died on the 5th of January, 1956. So she lived to be 82 years old. <clears throat> and she was, as they say, a French actress and singer, and at one time the highest paid female entertainer in the world, which is good for her. And here's the quote, not too great, but why not? A kiss can be a comma, a question mark, or an exclamation point. Well, yeah, well said, Miss Tinguet. Good. The Daily Aristos. Today, the two world wars were wars among societies dominated by the emotions of the adolescent. East and West unhappily and passionately married in the house of the world, both derive vigor and energy from their mutual love-hatred. They erect and exercise and thrill each other. They stimulate each other in many ways, besides the economic. Yeah, that's true. Nothing has changed much 60 years later. Here we go, the Daily Stoic. Trust, but verify. First off, don't let the force of the impression carry you away. Say to it, hold up a bit and let me see who you are and where you are from. Let me put you to the test. Epictetus, Discourses 2.18.24 one of the wonders of your mind is the quickness with which it can comprehend and categorize things. As Malcolm Gladwell wrote in Blink, 
we are constantly making split-second decisions based on years of experience and knowledge, as well as using the same skill to confirm prejudices, stereotypes and assumptions. Clearly, the former thinking is a source of strength, whereas the latter is a great weakness. We lose very little by taking a beat to consider our own thoughts. Is this really so bad? What do I really know about this person? Who do I have such strong feelings here? Why do I have such strong feelings here? Is anxiety really adding much to the situation? What's so special about X? By asking these questions, by putting your impressions to the test as Epictetus recommends, we're less likely to be carried away by them or make a move on a mistaken or biased one. We're still free to use our instincts, but we should always, as the Russian proverb says, trust, but verify. That's it. Good Stoic reading today. And now, the conclusion, April 5, Daily Reflections. Today, True Brotherhood. We have not once sought to be one in a family, to be a friend among friends, to be a worker among workers, to be a useful member of society. Always we try to struggle to the top of the heap or to hide underneath it. This self-centered behavior blocked a partnership relation with any one of those about us. Of true brotherhood, we had small comprehension. Taken from 12 and 12, page 53. This message contained in step four was the first one I heard loud and clear. I hadn't seen myself in print before. Prior to my coming into AA, I knew of no place that could teach me how to become a person among persons. From my very first meeting, I saw people doing just that and wanted what they had. One of the reasons that I'm happy, sober, alcoholic today is that I'm learning this most important lesson. On that note, thank you, Ex-Survivors. <laughs>